All right, in this training, we're going to cover timers and countdowns, uh, the messages tool within ProPresenter, and see how we might use those during our services. So let's take a quick look. As you can see, we're in ProPresenter 7. I've got a simple presentation running, and I'm currently in my show controls under the messages. We have a few messages that are presets that we've built out here in the past, and we use those quite frequently. And this minute 30 timer, if we just choose to show, you can see that it automatically puts a minute 30 up here. When it counts down to zero, it just disappears. All right, so we're gonna clear that message using the clear message button here. Our background stays up because we only cleared the message. Now let's take a look at the 915 service timer. This one's slightly different. If I were to show this, you can see it is showing a different time, and in fact, it doesn't even fit within our bounds here. And I can show you why. Um, the service timer is actually a countdown to time, and this time is way off in the future, 17 hours evidently into the future. And we don't generally show this timer uh, with any, any further than maybe even 15 minutes outside of our service time. So we didn't make this bubble uh, large enough to accommodate the extra characters from the extra amount of time. It's just built specifically for that time and the use that we use in the mornings. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that timer. And we'll take a look at the difference between the 915 timer, which is showing a countdown to time, and it's set for a specific time. And then our minute 30 timer is a countdown timer as opposed to countdown to time. And with countdown timer, it just counts down the specific amount of time that you have chosen. Hopefully that makes sense as to why, how we use the different ones. Um, the reason why we have a preset for the minute 30 is because that's how much time we put on the clock when we're practicing our transitions. And then we have our service timers for the very specific service times that we need. Um, so hopefully that makes some sense. Each of these timers does link to a template. If you happen to have a problem as you are presenting that your timer isn't in the right spot, you might have a template issue. You can get to more information about your templates by editing a timer with this edit button. And within the edit button, just make sure that you have a template that's selected that's accurate for what you need. Now let's talk about that template here real quick. Uh, we can go into our templates editor by choosing more and theme editor. It automatically pulled me to the timer theme, but you can go to this pull-down list if you wanted different timers. And we've got the, the one template that we've always used, but uh, for this example, how, we, how about we modify that? Um, so I'm just actually gonna duplicate it, and we're gonna call this one invert. And I'm not sure we'll use this on a Sunday, but for this example, it's kind of fun. Uh, we'll just change our text color to black. We'll change our shape to uh, white, and we've simply inverted that text. Now, if I were to go back to a timer, like say our minute 30 timer, and apply a different theme, and I'm gonna apply that invert theme, when I show that, it is indicating that change now. So, pretty simple. Um, you can clear the messages again here, and just so we're ready for Sunday, I'm gonna put this back to the template that we normally use, and I'm gonna show it one more time just to make sure. Looks good, all right. Now there are things that happen when you trigger a timer. In this particular case, when we trigger a minute 30 timer, it is actually starting the service timer. And we can find that service timer in the show controls in the button right next to the messages. So you can see our service timer is actually running. Uh, if I were to display this message one more time, it would actually show this time that is continuing to run. There may be a case where we want to trigger a message which will then start a timer, and we might want our presenter to see that particular timer on our backdrop behind us. Uh, for example, our stage screen. So this, uh, as you can see in the preview window, is what our typical stage screen looks like, and you don't see that service timer anywhere up here. So let's see if we can add it to this particular stage screen so that um, it, it could be viewed from the stage. So real quick, as an example, we're gonna go into screens, we're gonna choose edit layouts, which allows for us to modify that stage screen. And here's our stage screen. Um, in order to add a timer, we will use the add button. I'm gonna choose timers, and service timer is the one that we're looking for. And it's just gonna give me a little text box, basically. And I can resize that text, I can put it anywhere I want, I'm gonna put it right down in here. And uh, the special part about this particular text box is it is, over here to the right, linked text, and it's linked to a specific timer. Um, the service timer in this particular case. And we can modify the way that it looks by uh, choosing the various elements here. 
And uh, now we've made a small change to our theme. Let's actually take a look at what happens when we show that message again. All right, so we'll preview screen one. There is no message. We'll look at our timers. Timer is not running. I'm going to go ahead and show the message now. That message shows on my front screen as expected. But what we should see when we come over to our stage screen is we actually see the countdown timer continuing right here. And of course, we would format that and put it in a specific spot. Um, but that just allows for you to put certain timers in place. Well, since we were able to make that timer show our service timer, what if we wanted it to show a duration of how long somebody should teach? This might be kind of interesting. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clear the message. Um, we can go into timers and we can stop that timer, which is going to stop it here. Let's go into our theme real quick. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, not themes. <laughs> Let's go into our layouts editor. Um, and this is our stage display. We can see this particular timer. Um, let's say we want this timer to be linked to countdown two, whatever that happens to be. So now when I go back into my show and I show the message that we had done previously, which starts the service timer, hit show, and it is not indicating a change on this timer because this timer is now linked to the countdown to timer. If we look into our timers, we can see countdown to is not running anything. Um, so here's what we can also do to make this helpful for maybe somebody who's presenting. Let's say um, this slide right here happens to be the start of somebody's presentation and they needed a particular amount of time to present and we're going to give them a countdown timer. So I can right click on this slide, I can add an action, I can choose timer and the countdown to timer is the one we want to choose because that's what we linked here in our stage display. Now you can see as I selected countdown to timer, it allows me to choose an option to start that timer when this slide is clicked. I could also stop the timer or I could reset the timer. I'm going to go ahead and choose reset. Reset will take that timer back to whatever the default is that we have in here. So in this particular case, it's a countdown to time. Let's make a change here real quick for us. Let's just say it's a one minute timer. Okay, so our countdown to timer, when it's reset, will go to one minute. We can tell it's reset by looking at our preview here. Uh, when I select the slide, it is going to reset to one minute. Now let's say that did reset it, but I wanted it to start the timer when I select this slide. I'm going to add an action to this slide. I'm going to choose timer, countdown to, and we're going to go ahead and tell it to start. Now it, it gives us an option to reset our configuration of what time frame it starts at, or I can just uncheck that to let it stay, in, uh, stay with the default that we had. So now that I've added a start timer here, when I select this slide, it is going to start that timer. And you can see here it's counting down. And I wish I would have made that larger for you in the training. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. Now if I were to select back over here, what would you think would happen? It's going to reset that timer. Um, again, that is just the nature of having that slide element there. If we click it again, it's going to go and start that timer. Cool? All right, so that timer could be modified to be anything you want. Uh, let's go back into our screen layouts. This timer could link to um, any of our previous timers. Um, it could be the service timer, a new timer. You can create one of your own. Um, it, we could also make it count up instead of counting down. There's so much that you can do with that timer, but just know that when you add an element to your layout here, just like this, and you link the text to a timer, um, those, I'm going to delete that while I'm thinking about it. Uh, those timers that you have in show controls under the timer section are the ones that are actually being displayed on that clock. Um, I think if there's anything else more we might want to cover with timers. Um, I'll cover more in a future video how we might be able to use macros to affect the timers. Um, that's always really nice. to. Um, it's a cool feature to use and can save you a lot of clicks in setting this up in the future. But for now, I think that's it for messages and timers. Uh, keep checking back for more.